I did promise that I was going to share with you the super simple three steps I take when something goes wrong to turn it into a positive as quickly as possible and make sure I don't get derailed. So in order to do that, I just want to take you back to one of my racing stories. And I was actually competing in the National Athletics Championships in Melbourne in, in 2014. And it was not just for para-athletes, it was for the best athletes in the country. It was also a Commonwealth Games selection meet. So there's a lot of attention on this race. Now, in the lead up to this event, it had taken me about a year to get my first racing wheelchair. And when I got it, it was a complete clunker. It was about double the weight of the best athletes' chairs and it had a bit of a steering problem. So I christened it the shopping trolley. <laughs> and also too, like in the, in the classification that I'm in for racing, like I'm actually the first woman in Australia ever to compete in this classification and we don't break any land speed records. So in the lead up, I was, I was joking that I was gonna do the slowest 100 meters in history, that the 100 meters is over way too fast. So I'm gonna just make it last a little bit longer. And, and in this final, there was, there was only two of us racing and the, the girl I was racing against, she's in a much more able classification. So to put it into perspective, she does her 100 metres in less than 20 seconds. And the best I'd done in my state titles a couple of weeks beforehand was 59 seconds. So there was light years between us. So on the start line, I said to her, I said, oh, can you make me a cup of tea while you're waiting for me at the other end? <laughs> And so we were, at, this is, we were at the track, um, I was in lane four, she was in lane five, and there was a lot of, the, 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 the stadium was packed, this is at, um, at Lakeside in Melbourne, and Sally Pearson had just raced the 100 metres flat before us, so as I said, lots of attention. Um, it was being live streamed on the internet around the world as well, so all eyes were on the track. Anyway, the gun went, we started, um, I just sort of kept my head down. I sort of looked up, she was finished. And then I got about halfway down the straight and then my chair started to veer to the left. Now the problem was I could only steer it to the left. Now there's some crazy crap that goes through your mind when you're in situations like this. So I had this thought process that if I just let my chair drift to the inside rail, I could actually push along the rail, kind of like bumper bowling. <laughs> So I did, I, I got there, I did like two pushes and then next thing you know, my front wheel went over the rail and I got stuck. <laughs> so here I was now in front of a packed silent grandstand <laughs> with my wheel stuck. Now lucky resilience is my thing, huh? And so, but I'd blocked out everything and I was determined there was not gonna be did not finish next to my name. So I got my fingers in the wheels and I started trying to throw my weight, trying to get the wheel popped off. And eventually I unhooked the wheel off the rail. And I, as I started to push, the wheels started clapping. And they're probably thinking, get the hell off. We want to see the next race. And I finished the race, but I couldn't get out of that chair fast enough. But all through that process, I decided that it was actually funny, not embarrassing. Now, because that was an Australian championships, it ended up being that it was um, a world ranked event too. So when I finally had the courage to look up on the Paralympic website a couple of weeks later and to see the world rankings, I looked and I saw Stacey Kopass of Australia in Melbourne, T51, 100 metres for women, with a time of 2 minutes and 27 seconds. <laughs> so I thought it was hilarious. And I also thought it was awesome because now the rest of the world thinks I'm shit. <laughs> So they're not even gonna see me as a threat. So how did I get to that point? What was, what was that all about? So the first step I did in that moment when I was stuck on that rail is I said, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be where I am at this moment in time. You cannot feel bad about something you're grateful for. So say thank you. The second thing I did was I asked, what's the lesson in this? Now, if you look back at all that talk I had beforehand, I was talking about shopping trolley and doing the slowest 100 meters in history, all these things. I manifested that entire situation. So you've got to be very careful about sarcasm. Sarcasm is really, really dangerous. You've got to focus on what you do want, not what you don't want. And again, joking about stuff, you're going to make it happen. So be very conscious of not just the words you use, but the tone in which you use them as well. And the third thing I did was I asked, how could this help somebody else? 
So you may not know the answer to that third question straight away. You may not know the answer to the second question straight away, but ask the question. And eventually I realised that, again, I was able to then share this lesson about how bad sarcasm is. And also, too, once you find the lesson and you know that it could help somebody else, that situation that seemed really negative at the time has immense value. So again, how can you feel bad about a situation that, again, is going to help somebody else?